Goresh. You are listening to the Let's Go Devils podcast on the Primetime Radio Network. Happy Devils Sunday. This is Devils After Dark coming to you live, live from the Primetime Radio Studios inside the bunker in an undisclosed location in beautiful New Jersey and Scotty's Michael J. Fox Studios in Beverly Hills, California. Streaming live on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, X Live, and Twitch on the Let's Go Devils Network as the Devils shut out the New York Islanders t- today. Four to nothing. That's right. Yep. Uh, Devils needed a win in the second half of a back-to-back where we know they've struggled all year long, but spoiler alert, so have the Icelanders. Um, And the Devils took advantage of it today, playing a hell of a lot better than they did yesterday against the lowly Ottawa Senators. Let's talk about it. Game number 71 on the season on the road, not too far away, on Long Island, a big four-point game. Devils got to show some effort today. Got to show some effort. Uh, They're putting in another game, uh, much like last weekend in Arizona and Vegas, two games in under 24 hours. Use their speed, block some shots, fill in those lanes, play some defense, get a power play goal, no lazy passing. And eh, Devils... Kind of checked all those boxes today against these Islanders. So first period started off with a bang. Luke, you underestimate my power. Off the crossbar with this uh, newly revamped third line of Noshik, Mercer, um, and Palat putting in some really good shifts there early in the game. Um, Devils went on the PK, which again was a huge Huge asset for this team. Uh, Hataka had to take a a, a quote unquote good penalty trying to stop a uh, an opportunity right in the front. Um, and then what was it? Halla takes a penalty right after that. Um, and Eric Halla, too many penalties this year. I really feel like I'm always seeing him go to the box. He might be overtaking uh, Brendan Smith as the penalty champion uh, of this team. Uh, but the power play kills both. And Kakinen came up with some really nice saves. Uh, he was solid in net all afternoon long, or excuse me, evening for the uh, for the East Coast afternoon out here for me on the West. Uh, Devils get a um, a late power play, and Timo Meyer, who had himself a game, um, Timo puts on some uh, some stick handle moves at the side of the net, and then what he does. As he's at the side, and he pulls the puck back almost to the goal line onto his backhand, and then quickly, whoop, backhand pass right into the slot on the money, on the tape, which is something we did not see yesterday at all in that Coyotes game. We saw passes to nobody into midair. Oh, hello. Here's a free puck for you. Ottawa, or not, did I say Arizona? I'm sorry, Ottawa game. Um in the Ottawa game yesterday. Here's a drop pass to no one. Oh, today, all those passes were right on the tape. And Timo puts one right on the tape to uh, Jack. He gets the shot. And I think one of the uh, Islanders' defense, it might have been Sorokin, but it looked like it changed um, It changed directions before it even got to Sorokin. So I think one of the Islanders just got a stick on that Jack shot. It goes just wide. But then Nico is tripped down, which puts the Devils into a five-on-three situation. And then, whoo, Kokkinen bails the team out with a massive, massive glove save as the Devils give up a two-on-one odd man rush while they're on a five-on-three. You don't see that happen too often, but either way, Um, the Devils don't get a goal there, but then just after the five on three expires, Jack Hughes gets yanked down. So another five on three power play for the Devils to start the second period, which is where we're headed now. Can they make the Islanders pay for their mistakes? And guess what? They did power play goal. That's right. They got another one 
on the board here, getting things going. It's Timo time, baby. Give me fuel. Give me fire. Give me close to Timo. Bye. Ooh, yeah. His 23rd of the year. And dare we say, I know we've been talking about it for a little, a little bit of time here now. Basically, through the month of March, as Timo has been absolutely on fire. Um, he's got 12 goals in the month of March, which leads the league. You know, and, and we've been talking about, oh, we don't want to get too ahead of ourselves. Can Timo still push for 30? We were saying, hey, 25. Again, I didn't think he was going to get anywhere near either of those numbers the way the play was going uh, before the month of March. But Timo is playing like the player, you know, that we signed to that big contract. And he is really carrying the load for this team right now in A, making things happen on the ice, B, putting the puck in the back of the net, uh, which we know the Devils are struggling with there for a while, and C, he's being a bulldog out there. We're going to get to a little bit of that later. But this one, Jack Hughes gets the primary assist. Luke gets the secondary at 38 seconds into the second period. A PPG power play goal. Timo Meyer, 12 goals in 13 games. And this one comes from... Jack, uh, Luke and Jack, you know, doing their little dance there uh, at the point which we see them all the time, kind of just dropping it back to each other and switching positions and moving around. So Luke feeds Jack as he's coming around in a big circle and starts doing his thing. You know what he likes to do, work up that wing. And he puts a beautiful pass, again, right on the tape, which was completely non-existent yesterday. It's looked like a whole other team out there today but puts it right on the tape to Timo Meyer, who was parked right at the side of Sorokin and just whoop, one fluid motion right into the back of the net. As we said, Timo Meyer, his 23rd of the season. We should start taking some bets. Timo, um, I won't I won't use the 3-0 marker. I hope he gets close to 30, but what we say, I'll say 20, 27 goals. Who's got over? Who's got under? He's got 23 right now. 11 games left. 27 goals. I'm going to go over. I hope I don't jinx up. Either way, it's one nothing. Devils. 38 seconds into the second period. Once again, Timo Meyer leading the league in goals throughout the month of March with 12. He's got a 12-pack. And then after that, Jack says, well, it's great getting an assist, but Timo, how about we switch places and you do the assist and I get the goal? And Timo says, sure thing, buddy. Let's make it happen. And Jumpin' Jack Flash, that's right, Gentleman Jack Hughes gets his 24th goal of the season at 257. An even strength goal to put the Devils up 2 nothing. And this one starts out, um, Timo Meyer gets the puck to Jack Hughes. After two Islanders collide, Three Stooges style, uh, right at the blue line, which then springs the Devils the opposite direction. Uh, it's Jack and Jesper on a two-on-one, and Jack is just holding and holding and holding. He's got the puck on his forehand on the inside, and he lets one of those patented Jack Hughes shots just rip. One of those superstar shots that you need that precision um, to get into the net, and we've seen him do it. So many times where it's not near side, it's a far side shot between the goaltender and the pipe. You got a you got like a slither of room right there. Did I say slither? I'm thinking Jake the Snake. Sliver of room right there to sneak it in. And we've seen Jack do this plenty of times in the past. And today was no different. Mid-range, far side nastiness from Jack Hughes to put the Devils up 2-0 at 257 of the second period, even strength goal, but the Devils are not done there. Oh, by the way, Timo gets the assist his 20th, and Jesper Bratt uh, gets the other assist his 46th of the year. And we have another goal to put the Devils up 3-0, and this time it's the man who everyone has been saying, give him some more playing time. And he has been rewarded with that. And he has been showing uh, why he was rewarded. Alexander Holtz gets his 16th goal of the season. Yes, he has 16. 
after being buried for so much of this year and benched, he still is managing 16 and might break 20 by the end of this season. 16th of the year, but really, this play was made by Shimon Nemitz. Battling along the boards, doing some, give me this puck. You're poking it. I'll give it back. <laughs> some stick handling over here. Poke left, right. I got it. And I'm making my way to the net. It was a stick battle. I won't say it was as much of a physical battle, but it was a stick battle along the boards to get that puck. And Nemitz came out on top. And he's able to kind of slide it through the legs of the Islanders defenseman. And then he takes off straight towards the goal. Okay. On, on the angle side, you know, he's like, maybe five feet above the goal line. So he's just going straight at the goal. And now he's got an angle for a shot here. And there's two other Islander defensemen right in front of the net. He somehow puts a pass between both of those defensemen. Tell me if this sounds familiar. Right on the tape. Right on the tape to Alexander Holtz. And you know Alexander Holtz's greatest weapon is that shot that he has. He does not miss from that range and he didn't tonight because he used those shot skills and he put it into the back of the net for his 16th goal of the season nemitz gets the primary uh his 16th assist of the season as well even strength goal at 6 12 of the second period after that the devil's got another big penalty kill then we had a little bit of a scare as anders lee um, who, you know, Anders Lee is a tough player, gritty, hard nosed. I don't know if you would describe Anders Lee as dirty, though. Uh, but this was, you know, it, it was a kneeing. It was a kneeing thing. And we don't like seeing that um, by anyone. So do I think Anders Lee purposely went out there on Nico Heischer to knee him? No. No, I don't. But you never want to see your captain take a hit like that. And in the past, we have we have seen Nico Heischer take a plenty of shots and nobody on the team decided to stand up for him. Well, Timo Meyer, as we've been talking about, putting the putting the puck in the back of the net, sparking this team offensively, getting to play in the in the in the correct positions, being on that power play in front of the net, doing the screens. The bulldog mentality. Well, it came out, and he didn't waste no time. He went right over to Anders Lee and gave him a little push. He didn't give him a little shove. Timo Meyer dropped the gloves. And he got listen, Anders Lee, he knows how to handle himself in those fights. But Timo Meyer, he got a couple shots in there. He landed a pretty good one. Another one that was, you know, but he landed one real good one in there. And that's all you got to do. You got to stand up for your teammates. It's not like he got pummeled by Anders Lee. But I would say maybe Anders Lee got a couple more shots in. But it doesn't matter. You got to make people pay. If you're going to try and take out, I don't, excuse me, let me let me rephrase that. Not try and take out. I don't think Anders Lee was purposely trying to do that. Uh, but if someone, if something happens like that, you can't let your captain just get knocked around with any at any sort without any sort of response. Neither should you be letting a Jack Hughes or a Jesper Bratt or a Luke or a Nemitz, your young kids. You need that response. Timo stepped in and did what he had to do. Got a couple good shots in there as well to say, hey, we're not going to take that. D. Snyder twisted sister style, all right? So good on Timo Meyer for not only scoring a goal, getting assists, and getting to fight the Gordy. That's right, the Gordy Howe hat trick. But just being that bulldog and that all-around player, power forward that every Devils fan was expecting throughout the season. And again, we're not going to get into it. The injuries, maybe some of the uh, line mismanagement that happened previously, whatever it was. I'm tending to think it's more that he's actually fully healthy now after the two injuries. Uh, but love everything I've been seeing from Timo Meyer. So from this, Anders Lee gets a, a game. He's out. He gets kicked out of the game. Timo gets a 10 minute, a five minute for fighting, and then a two minute instigator. Anders Lee gets the five 
for fighting. He also gets a five-minute major for kneeing, plus the misconduct. So how that boils down to um, is the fightings obviously cancel out. And then the instigator, so we get a we get a two minute four on four, which would be the instigator, and then a three minute power play for the Devils that crosses over into the third period. Now, spoiler alert: the Devils didn't score on it, but they're already up three nothing. The best thing was, hey, don't give up another shorthanded goal like you did yesterday. They did not. Start of the third period, Nico Heischer. Thank you. Returns from the locker room. Thank you. Thank you, sweet Ozzy, right here behind me for letting Nico Heischer come back. Our Lord and Savior, Prince of Darkness, Ozzy Osbourne. Cockenin gets a uh, piece of a Casey's Ezekiel shot. Oh, that's right. He was sliding across and he had that blocker out. Oh, he was leaning. Boop. Buck out. Out of play. Great, great save there by uh, Cockenin. Uh, Devils got a PK over there. Kyle Palmieri. Oh, I'm sorry, but we're not playing softball today. No, no, you'll be doing that quite often in in a couple weeks when the Islanders aren't in the playoffs. Ooh, shots fired. But uh, the Islanders are on a power play. There's a puck that kind of pops up off of uh, Kakinen. Cockinen, sorry, uh, in front of the net, and uh, Kyle Palmieri tries to like kind of catch it and shovel it there uh, into the net. <clears throat> you gotta use your stick, bud. Sorry about that one. Goal immediately waved off by the officials. Uh, no need to even review it because uh, it was pretty blatant. Kyle Palmieri, the softball pitcher, playing hockey. The softball pitcher. We didn't know we needed, or that the NHL didn't know they needed. And what do they say at the end of Dark Knight? A watchful guardian. He's not the hero this town deserves, but it's the hero. He's Kyle Palmieri is a softball pitcher. <laughs> this town, <laughs> or whatever. The, we're moving on. I'm getting, uh, I'm getting all uh, confused over here. That penalty kill though, Nick D. Simone, big block, and then Coggin again. He had two saves on a sequence. One at each side of the post. One boom on, on his left side, gets it, and then he slides to the other side of the post to get the rebound as well. Um, Patrick Waugh pulled Sorokin very early in the game, a la Lindy Ruff. Uh, Tierney gets the empty net goal at, what was that? 15-53. That's right. Patrick Waugh says, the hell with this. Four minutes left, five minutes left. Sorokin, get your ass out here. We're going to try something, and it backfires. Empty net goal. Tierney is third. Halla and Ball get the assists. Put the Devils up for nothing, and you know what? That's three out of four. They still can't get to that four-game winning streak, but they have had three wins out of their last four. It makes last night – it makes the point – the points loss tough. The fact that they came out and rebounded and played really well and didn't have another stinker of a game, you feel good about that. But the idea of not cashing in on those points against the Ottawa Senators, that still stings a little. But three out of four is good. That's good. But now, oh boy. We start with the Toronto Maple Leafs again on Tuesday. Devils are now five points back. And let's check out these uh, shot totals over here. 6-17 in that second period for the Devils. Seven for a total of 30. Islanders 13-10-13 for a total of 36. Um, Devils had the advantage in the faceoff circle. 32 wins to the Islanders 25. Devils one for four. On the power play, Islanders 0 for 5. So that PK now, uh, I believe, is in the top 10 in the league. Remember when they were like 27th or 26th in the league, something like that? They are now top 10 in the league. Unbelievable job by the penalty kill uh, unit this year. Um, Islanders out hit the Devils 20 to 13. Islanders also blocked a lot of shots, 24 to the Devils. 15. So taking now a quick look at the old standings. Let's see here. Washington won today. They have 79 points. 
Um, they have played only 70 games, though. Uh, the Devils have played 72, and they are at 74 points. The Islanders have only played 71. They're at 75. And the Detroit Red Wings have also only played 71. They are now at 78 points. So the Devils obviously still have some teams to leapfrog. Um, the Flyers, by the way, have 81 points with 71 games played. The Devils still have a game against the Islanders, the last one of the season, and the Philadelphia Flyers, the second to last one of the season. Will it actually come down to those final two games? It very well might be. So we'll see what happens because they got a tough stretch ahead with three, three against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Not really what you want to see on the old schedule, but also a lot of these other teams, the Red Wings, the Capitals, the Islanders, the Flyers, uh, a lot of their games, they are playing each other. Someone's got to lose there. Hopefully it doesn't go to OT so someone gets a point, um, but someone's got to lose and you're going to be hoping for a regulation loss one way or the other. Let's check in with the king of the football calls himself right now uh, and see what he thought of this game. Sam, by God, woo, and everyone else on YouTube Live, Facebook Live, Instagram, Twitch, Twitter Live. Let us know what you think of this Devil's Victory rebounding from yesterday's craptastic loss. Capo, the Vezina, Cockinen. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Tom Fitzgerald oh, should not make any more goalie decisions. Um, not saying that he is going to be the future of the New Jersey Devils, but he basically wrote him off. If you remember after that trade, uh, basically it was a salary dump of Vitek Vanacek's next year that uh, it was Jake Allen being the 1B for next season. And, you know, that seems to be a good move. But this kid so far is playing for another contract. He's got a chip on his shoulder, and he didn't play that bad. Uh, he got pulled uh, against Arizona, if you remember, Scotty. Remember. But, but the Devils came out flat, and Arizona put up, what, three or four goals uh, up on him. So uh, I don't remember the amount, but the, the point it is. It was three, but. All, all of them, I would put more on the Devils' defense than I would put on than I put on yeah. him. And how does he redeem himself? Uh, that save when it was a five-on-three, um, shorthanded chance for the Islanders, and he made that crucial save that could have probably, if that puck went in, I think the game could have been over because then the Islanders would have all the momentum, and then mm -hmm. on top of everything else. Uh, the season's over because it would have been so demoralizing. But he made the save, and the Devils are getting key saves from both Allen, for the most part, and Kokkinen. And, you know, right now, I, I, I don't even know what to make of this team because of the inconsistency. So I'm mm -hmm. going to say this. I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say something, Scotty. This team oh, is boy. so bad against teams like San Jose and Ottawa and Anaheim where they play down to their level. Maybe it's a blessing in disguise they're playing Toronto three times. Not saying that anything against Toronto. That Toronto's a great team. But they will play up to that level that we'd enough, expect yeah. because the inconsistency. I mean, they play better on the road for the most part, although they didn't do that in front of us. Maybe they were nervous. Maybe maybe because Arizona felt like a, uh, a Devils home game. Maybe that's the reason why they lost so badly. <laughs> <laughs> it did. It really did. Yeah, they, they hear the same voices. Shoot yeah. the puck! From Beer shoot Baron. The, shoot yeah. the GD puck! Yeah. You know. Um, but now Ted wants a football call, and it's like, well, did Marino get an assist today or anything? No, we don't do football. No, calls. and we have to wait. And this, there was no Jake the Snake. It was it was cocking in today. So if we get, it, don't worry. Once we get a we get a victory, we get a you know we're gonna get a nice Jake the Snake save. Uh, we're gonna have a Jake 
Don't call me Plumber. Don't call me Josh. The Snake Allen yeah. football call. Defensive yeah. side. We've we've Sam Sam Wu and I have been uh, brainstorming over there uh, to come up with some good ideas. And, and you know, uh, last this night, one. Sorry, this guy. Last night they looked so lethargic. Last night, they, and, and and then they come into this game with so much more energy. Mm-hmm. Were they partying the night before, and they came in as last night's game just hung over or something? I, I don't be. know. It's just maturity. Weird. Yeah. yeah, they're out partying on college night. I don't know. Could be. Uh, this one. This one goes out to uh, Gris Booker. Give me fuel. Give me fire. Give me Mitch from Timo Meyer. Ooh, yeah. Love seeing that. I'm sure Sam Wu, you love seeing that as well. Yeah. Timo Meyer is a slow starter uh, historically. Uh, a couple injuries here and there. It took a couple, you know, a couple weeks, three weeks to get himself going. And then now in the month of March, as he's healthy. He's leading the league in goals for the month of March so far. And now we can see why Fitzy made this trade and paid Timo Meyer all that money. Because right now he is uh, carrying the load consistently uh, for the New Jersey Devils. And the power play is now starting to really become alive again. Because there was a period of time where it was just dead and but right now they're 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 kind of coming back with the power play and you know what we need the power play going the penalty kill has been decent and you know what the first shutout how long has it been since the devils had a shutout i mean vtech had that one going into overtime his last game with the devils with carolina where, yeah. yeah but yeah there hasn't been one this season yeah that's the first one of the season. Yeah, so, so maybe something is brewing. I don't know. But, you know, I it just it's just mind boggling how inconsistent this team is. It's like highs and lows, and today was a big high. What Tuesday is gonna bring. Thank goodness it's on the road. You yeah, know? right. Um, yeah, we'll see what happened. And, and uh, one thing I forgot to uh, mention as well, uh, Big Mac didn't play today. He was uh, he's got a lower body injury. We all saw him crash into the boards um, rather awkwardly yesterday. So hoping that he's not out for a real long stretch here, even though I know he doesn't get a lot of minutes or whatever he Big Mac, I think, definitely provides a lot of protection for those guys out there and definitely going to need him in the lineup uh, once April 3rd rolls around as well because I think there's going to be some fireworks going on in that Rangers rematch. Um, And also, uh, Curtis Lazar was out of the lineup as well. Not really a huge surprise. Um, He blocked a massive shot yesterday and kind of dinged up uh, one of his legs. Um, he finished the game, but I'm sure, as sure, as, I'm sure as soon as he took that skate off yesterday, his foot just went like, <laughs> and just swole right up. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him miss. You know, uh, I, I hope you know Lazar. He'll probably be back in there on on Tuesday, uh, but hope Big Mac isn't really, um, you know, hurt hurt like that. Yeah, be, because he does, even though he doesn't get a lot of minutes. Um, you know, he does provide some toughness that this team has definitely been missing for, for quite some time. You know, he is one of the big boys of the league and having that, having that protection out there, I'm sure it makes Jack and Jesper and Luke and Nemitz uh, and all those, you know, players that are a little bit on the, you know, quote unquote, you know, smaller size, uh, not big hulking dudes, even Nico. Nico doesn't want to get run like that, you know. Timo stepped up today, but I'm I'm sure as hell if McDermott was in the lineup, you know his next shift out there, he would have been looking for Anders Lee. So um I just hope it's not something too too long term because even though he doesn't bring as much on the score sheet, I think Big Mac brings a lot to the confidence of this team. 
Uh, I'm pretty proud that what uh, Timo Meyer did, but at the same time, Scotty, he's the hottest guy on the team, and I'm like, please don't break your hand over the guy's head <laughs> or helmet because you hit him in the helmet, you could break a finger, you could break you a could. knuckle, you know, yeah. or whatnot. I mean, fighting, you know, has its consequences, uh, but Timo Meyer did, you know, step up, step up, defended his teammate. Uh, again, it's a deterrence for any kind of future shenanigans that might happen against Nico Heischer. You saw what happened uh, last season with the artificial infuriation of the Florida Panthers with Barkoff, which was a complete accident, you know, with mm-hmm. uh, Nico taking out his knee. And then you've got Matthew Kachuk doing what Matthew Kachuk does. And I'll tell you what, it's so effective. Who cares if, if it's not good for the game or whatever? It's effective. And... You know what? Having McDermott in the lineup, I hope he comes back soon because I don't want Timo Meyer doing that kind of stuff. I really don't. Only if necessary, which was fine tonight, but I'd rather not make a habit of it. You should have other guys doing that like Lazar and, and other uh, beats Again. that you may have. Both of them out of the lineup tonight. Yep. And that's where and that's where you kinda you look at Timo and you also see him. And I know I think Dano or Bryce Salvador mentioned this on the on the game pro- broadcast as well about Timo Meyer just growing as a leader here with this team as well. He realizes that we're down some of those tougher guys, and he sees his buddy, his fellow countryman, his captain, you know, take a take a dangerous kneeing, um, you know, hit. And I'm not. And again, just reiterating, I don't see Anders Lee as one of those you know, super dirty players that he was going out there targeting Nico. He sure, but still, you know, and, and Anders Lee answered the bell as well. When Timo came over there, you know, he obliged. Uh, he's a captain as well. One thing and I want to point out. Anders Lee got taken out a few, what was it? Two years ago where he got yep. knocked out with a, uh, with his knee as well too. So um, I'll, I'll give it to him for Timo stepping up there. And you know what, Sam, I will say, I agree with you. I don't want to see Timo fighting as much. I love his bulldog mentality. That seems to be coming out a lot more and more these days. Um, but, you know, when he went over there and dropped the gloves, I'm not going to lie, it, it got me really, really pumped. It almost, almost, not right there, not not to that full level, but it almost brought me back to that moment where – this guy who's unfortunately on the back of this jersey behind me um, who went and retired on us and uh, gave us years of penalties, um, Mr. Kovalchuk, who was it that he dropped on the Flyers? Was it was it Raleigh Cote, I think, where he was just kind of hanging down, hanging yeah. down, and he came up with that massive left or right, and he just clocked him, and he was just like, Kovi. Man, he got all of his legs and hips into that one, you know. Like, you, you and same thing. You don't want to see Kovalchuk dropping the gloves because, yeah, you don't want him to mess up his hand or anything like that. But when a guy like that steps up and does it, man, does that really energize? Oh, yeah. I don't know me as a fan. The, I'm the, sure it does the boys on the bench too. One of, one of the more infamous fights, Aginla and Lecavier in the Stanley Cup mm-hmm. Finals, like that. That was awesome because there, none, each each guy was not giving an inch, and I love right. that stuff too. I'm just saying, like the way this season is gone, it's like no one our luck. Timo does a good thing like that, and then you know he's out. Yeah, I know. You know, with a broken hand. But the point I was trying to make, and now this is something I also wanted to uh, say. If you look at that fight with uh, Meyer. Meyer and Lee. Thank you, Max. It was Braden Shen that Kobe knocked. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, so Meyer and Lee. Yesterday when McDermott fought, when his mm-hmm. guy fell down, he pulled he pulled away and didn't punch him when he was down. Yeah, Anders Lee did throw a couple extra shots yeah, at the end. Yeah, when, when Timo Meyer was down. That part I didn't yeah. like. That part I didn't like. Um, and, you know, again, it's... You know, that's a, I have a lot of respect for McDermott. When I saw that yesterday with Short Sky, we were in the stands, and when he could have pummeled him when he was down, no, he made sure that when he came back up, then he hit him in the face, you know. So, 
you know, mm-hmm. but you never really should hit a guy when when he's down and vulnerable like that because there comes a point where there's an unwritten code. You know, you just simply don't do that. But, you know, again, in the heat of the moment, you know, who knows, but with Anders Lee. But he's not – I don't find him to be a dirty player. I think what Timo did was fine, and Lee answered the bell, and it's over. You know, so. Yeah. And and the penalties assessed and- were, 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 were fine. That was fine. Yeah, yeah. I, I had no problem with it. And uh, the Devils' PK has, has been super strong, you know, throughout this season. They've just been getting better and better and better. Um, but that's also another thing, too. You know, if a guy takes some some liberties like that, and again, like we're not, we're not saying Anders Lee is a dirty player, but maybe there are players out there who have crossed the line uh, a number of times, and maybe they throw a couple extra shots in a fight when someone goes down. You know you got to answer Big Mac then after that as well. That's why I think it's important to have him in the lineup. Um, you know, and, and, and at times you can start double shifting, you know, your Nikos, your Timos, your Jacks, your Jespers, you know, throughout the throughout the third period or something like that if you don't want to play him in the third. But um, I just think he brings something that has been desperately missing from this team for quite some time. Oh, yeah. How many times have we said the Devils are soft? Over the last like two or three well, years. Well, you know? know, when we talk about April third, honestly, honestly, Scotty, it's got to be a team effort. It can't just be McDermott versus Rempe, because oh, I know. Let, let, let me tell you something. Um, there were two players. There's Bastion, and then you know, you know, obviously, uh, Siegenthaler, who is still out, by the way. You know, mm-hmm. uh, if both are out. And you know what, uh, it, you know, it comes a time where, you know, again, uh, I think uh, some of the Rangers top players uh, should get some uh, tough love right back, not just from McDermott, but from the entire team, you know. So, you know, you, you can't because otherwise it, what, what happens is if you show you're soft, they're going to they're going to do anything to Nico and Jack. And then it just makes the problem worse. You got to defend yourself. And, you know, on that April 3rd, I, I hope, I hope Travis Green, I hope they don't come out like they did against Ottawa because it's just, it would be just a freaking nightmare. Well, naturally, that Ranger game is another second half of a back to back. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it goes over there. And for as much as I hate him right now, I will say good on uh, Matt Rempe for, you know, saying like, hey, you know, that was a bad hit. I was wrong. You know, like I got to be in better control of my body. And uh, he said the right things when he returned. He didn't he didn't do or say the right things during that game. Um, but at least he's kind of learning. He is still a young kid, but he's going to have to he's going to have to answer the bell for that, um, you know, come April 3rd. Scotty, so obviously you didn't listen to the state of the fan address. I, 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 unfortunately, I did not. What did, uh, what did I miss? Uh, I called that statement a phony. He's you call it. <laughs> He's a phony. And same with LaViolette, saying that the, the, the hit on, on, on Bastion was clean. And then, and then uh, you know, Rempe going on and on and on and on. But, you know, according to a lot of Ranger fans, when they were signing autograph, he was laughing at the picture of uh, Bastion bleeding on the, on the ice as he's, doing making his autograph so honestly i think that was a phony statement that he is a statement right. that he had to do because he knows he is going to get his ass kicked on april 3rd either way okay you know okay so that and and i you know i i'm not against you or anything i just think that rempy is a phony and i also think uh george paros uh department of player safety is a moron uh as well and that's just how i feel that's all Okay. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. So I'll go with Sam Wu. Then I'll I'll say it was a phony. Oh, he's I'll a total phony. Him. You know, you know. <laughs> because I was telling Nick Villano that I was like, and Nick's Nick's point is, well, when you're suspended, you can't make statements. I'm like, yeah, but you know what? This could have been done a long time ago. You know, you had a, a ten days to prepare to make that statement. What else is he going to say? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit a, I'm gonna hit him with my other elbow. Of course he's going to say that. It's it's he's such a phony Rempy. He's such a phony. All right. I don't believe anything that guy says. Okay. Yep. Well, 
I'm I'm done with Rempy talk over there. So uh, April third, I'm sure we'll be talking about it a lot more. But yeah. either way, Devils get a victory right now, which they had to do, and coming through in the second half of a back to back. So you know that's always huge thing. Scotty never listens to you guys. What do you mean? What did I, what did I say? I don't know. Something. I missed something. So, um, either way, Beachmaster says we'll find target out. Panarin. That's exactly what I was talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah, you got to pull a Tom Wilson on April 3rd. Somebody's got to do it. I'm not confident I'm more, that this team is going to do it, but. I'm more just let Big Mac take out Rempe. That's, that's what I want to see. So, hopefully, Big Mac can uh, recover and this leg injury isn't anything too, too serious. Um, and he can get back into that lineup uh, for April the 3rd because uh, we know we're going to need him there. And, uh, you know, How about he, this he... Scenario? remember the line brawl 2012. Can you mm-hmm. imagine if the starting lineup <laughs> is McDermott, you know, all the big guys and then and then uh, LaViolette, you know, does the same right off the draw, get it over with right I off think the bat. I- I think that they might put. I think they might put Rempe and McDermott right out there just to get it over with and done. Yeah. Uh, right. Right at the beginning. I and wouldn't I be surprised that if they did that. You know. Yeah. That's what. That's what I see happening. Just get it done. Get it over with. And and so the, so hopefully the entire game just doesn't turn into chaos. You know, um, because if it if they don't get it out of the way real quick, it it will, it will. I almost so want to go if to they the want game. to be smart about it. Uh, and the, the officials don't want to be boneheads about it. Let them put them both out there to start and, and get it done and get it over with. And then you can move on and you can play hockey. Um, if you don't let them do that, if the officials try to get in the way again like they did in the last game, it's it's just going to get nastier and nastier and nastier. So, yeah. Either way, Devils win today. Today is what counts. And that's all the Devils can't. Devils can't be looking at April 3rd the way we're talking about it. They got to be looking at Tuesday against Toronto. That's what they have to do. Game by game, shift by shift. They cannot get ahead of themselves. Because they don't have any ground to lose anymore. They have to make up ground. And as we were talking about, most of the teams in front of us have like a game or two in hand. So if the Devils are going to make this push and make the rest of this season count right down to the very last game, they have to take it game by game, shift by shift. Full 60 minutes. We cannot have another stinker like Ottawa. We have to have them playing like they did today against the Islanders. No more, no more Ottawa games. Boy, that game, those two games are so important against the Penguins. It and was Rangers next week. It was, it was a tough one, but hopefully they'll play the same way they played against the Winnipeg Jets as well, as the Jets are two spots above. Yep. The old Toronto Maple Leafs, right? Is that what it is? Are they? Wait a minute. No, I'm sorry. That's Boston. What am I doing? Winnipeg is third. Oh, Winnipeg is third. There's the same spot as Toronto. Sorry. I got my uh, divisions mixed up over here. But Winnipeg's also got 93 points. Toronto's got 89. So, yeah, they're, they're pretty even. But we also know that Toronto's got some really big guns there. Austin Matthews has had himself a hell of a season. So, we'll see what goes on. Um, But... Make the passing count. Don't be sloppy. Don't be lazy. No drop passes to nobody. Keep that power play moving forward. And the Devils, somehow or another, this is like Godfather 3. Just when we thought we were out, they pull us back in. Because I know everybody yesterday was like, that's it. It's done. It's over. Wrap it up. Here we go. And then they go out there. And put a shutout on the board, win four nothing. And you're like, 
it ain't over yet. It ain't over yet. <laughs> so Max says the Devils are, are traveling up to Toronto tonight, and Toronto will have to fly home tomorrow after Carolina tonight. Okay, okay. Who knows? They got to play game by game. That's what it's going to be. And they got to find that elusive three-plus game winning streak. They've won three in a row a couple times, but no more. They have not reached four-game winning streak. So they really, really need to have to get there in these last couple weeks of the season. And hopefully they continue, like the Jets game, like this Islanders game, I mean, quite quite honestly, that Jets game was the best game they played all year. And today was pretty damn good as well. So throw out the Ottawa game. You move forward to Toronto. And you keep that momentum going. And if you feel like you have to play these better teams, well, let me tell you, You're in luck because the Devils have probably the hardest schedule left out of anybody. There's only, I think, I think they only have like one game or two games left that, or I think maybe only one game in a team that's not in playoff contention. So, um, yeah, let's go boys. Get it done. All right, Sam, that's all I got for today. Any other notes from you? Oh, well. I you know what it, one game at a time they got Tuesday against the the Leafs and then Friday against the Sabers and then they have some time off and then it was uh Tuesday against the Penguins at home April 2nd and then April 3rd against the New York Rangers at Madison Square Garden So they'll have time to rest Mm hmm. But they got to take care of business. All right. Well, I uh, want to thank all those tuning in. Dropping the podcast at midnight. Uh, there won't be a 9 p.m. Eastern edition of the Let's Go Dells podcast, Sunday edition. Uh, due to scheduling conflicts, somebody somebody's on a cruise somewhere. Ah, okay. Yeah, so, uh, but yeah, all right, going to hit the music, Scotty, got to find it again. (laughs) There it is. All righty, well, thank you all. Devils win 4 nothing. shut out victory over the New York Islanders. Feel better, folks, one game at a time. Until next time, let's go Devils.